I want to tell you today about my arrest at Marktree, Arkansas, in, in 19 uh, January, about the middle of January in 1935. Uh, it's important because uh, uh, it had it was on the front page of most uh, picked uh, most new newspaper across the country, and uh, uh, New York Times from then on uh, he, they wanted to see so anything that Mitchell or anybody wrote. And uh, it, it's what, uh, it was the first publicity we'd had, really. And uh, there, there, I was a workers' education uh, teacher, federal teacher at the time, and, but I was also on the board of the Southern Tenant Farmers Union. And Mitchell had taken a a group of sharecroppers with him to Washington, D.C. Uh, to try to get the Roosevelt administration to move. And, uh, but he was due back on, on that day, and he, he had uh, wired me uh, to chair the meeting, and uh, they'd get there hopefully before the crowd left, and they did. Uh, uh, this, this was right in the middle of uh, Mark III. Uh, uh, there was a platform there. We had been using it from time to time, and everybody else did too, see. And uh, uh, the sharecroppers and other people in the Tyranza and, and Mark Tree especially, uh, planters and sharecroppers, are, they were all out, four or five hundred of them. And the uh, platform was about five feet high, and there's only two places to climb up on. Uh, and I opened the meeting, and. Uh, told him about uh, the night before uh, at the superintendent uh, schools in, in Tyranza had, had visited uh, the, the country schoolhouse where I was having a class on, on unionism, and um, which I was supposed to do as a, as a federal teacher. And they broke up the beating and uh, uh, the superintendent wanted me to see me the next morning, uh, which happened to be the, 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 the morning of, of the day that we held this afternoon meeting. And uh, he had threatened me if I didn't stop uh, those kind of meetings in, in, in his country school, so I, uh, he, he'd had to see that you uh, uh, didn't do it anymore, and uh, uh, he did it in a threatening way, and I said, well, that sounds like Ku Klux Klan uh, measure. And he says, well, yeah, it is. <laughs> so uh, I didn't argue with him anymore, but uh, that that was the background of, of, of my talk. That, uh, and, and when I said uh, that day that uh, I could uh, recru recruit uh, enough sharecroppers to uh, lynch any uh, plantation owner in the whole Poinsett County, and uh, uh, that of course. Uh, the sharecroppers were enthusiastic about it, threw up their hats in the air, and they, uh, uh, the 
hunters were, were there. They, you could tell that they weren't. Uh, they were mad about everything I was saying. So uh, I thought I'd said about enough, and uh, so I called um, McKinley to the platform. He was our vice president, and um, he was one of the, one of those uh, people that could sing, and he he, he could lead sings songs. We had several of them, uh, and. Uh, 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 I turned the, the meeting over to McKinley, and I noticed that the sheriff and, the, and one of his deputies and the, his secretary were at one, one corner, and uh, I figured that they were going to arrest me. So I, I went to, there was only two corners that uh, you could get up and down on that five-foot platform, and so I just walked right straight to him. And, uh, and sure enough, they uh, took hold of my arm and uh, walked me to around the corner to where the the uh, they had an office there for for the deputies and prosecuting assistant prosecuting attorney who was also present and. Uh, the while we were in in there, the clerk uh, uh, who had taken down, uh, I guess, most of what I said, uh, and she was translating it from uh, uh, put it put it in on a t she used a typewriter and translated from her. Uh, Fast writing, uh, and the a couple of the deputies came in there and told the, de the sheriff. He says uh, the, the crowd's getting uh, it's going to be uh, uh, they figured they couldn't control the crowd, they, 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 and then they, they were. See, they were going to take me to Harrisburg, the county seat, uh, and uh, they were afraid to take me to the car because uh, they, they figured that the sharecroppers would uh, take me away, away from them. See. And uh, the sher sheriff told them to, well, tell them to move back out of the way. And, oh, no, they won't do it. Pay no attention to what I. I said, well, uh, let me talk to him, and so I, uh, I didn't wait till the sheriff answered. I w walked right straight out, uh, out, stayed right in front of the door, and uh, the, at that time, uh, oh yeah, the. The assistant uh, prosecuting attorney says, oh, yeah, Rogers, they'll, they'll do what you want them to. I said, that's right. And and sure enough, uh, McKinley, after I had told him to get clear out of sight, with their, and they did, and uh, uh, then, then they, they was freed deputy sheriff's in the back seat, and the sheriff and I were in the front seat, but we went over to the county seat. Okay, let's stop right here. This is good. Yeah. <coughs> Mark? Part two. Right. You turn over the meeting over to Mr. McKinney. Uh, uh, McKinney, or, um, he was our uh, first, uh, only just, vice president we had. When it was time for me to turn the meeting over to Mr. McKinney, our vice president. Yeah. I I decided to introduce him like he was uh, as a uh, Mr. McKinley, and uh, uh, I knew that uh, 
the planners wouldn't like that at all. And uh, uh, but uh, he, he he was our vice president, and uh, he had actually been active in, in the World War uh, World War One. In introducing McKinley to carry on the meeting, uh, he, he was, he's black and uh, uh, he's also our vice president and he's been active at the organizations for many years. And, uh, but uh, the reason I thought uh, McKinney, I just called him Mac, or, uh, he, I called him Mr. because I, I knew those planners wouldn't like it. And uh, uh, I was correct on that. And, uh, but th th this incident uh, was picked up by the newspapers and uh, we were on the front page of a lot of those papers for a long time and uh, it uh, a lot of people and didn't know what a sharecropper was but uh, at the time uh, Norman Thomas uh, started uh, on a tour and explained about sharecroppers well, that, uh, they learned before, but uh, okay, that's good. Stop right there. Yeah. Mark. Mark. You can begin. Uh, Mitchell once asked me uh, about. Uh, uh, he. He, he knew that he and I both had been in tight situations and uh, it could have been, uh, we could have been attacked uh, many times and uh, he, he asked and, and he helped me answer the question too. But, uh, uh, well, why why do we take such chances, you know? And uh, uh, well, I said, well, we, you know, you and I, something that has to be done, we just up and do it. And uh, I said, my own, Mine was uh, uh, the the white sharecroppers had been joining uh, as fast as the blacks were joining the Southern Senate Farmers Union, and uh, but there were uh, enough uh, whites that the planters didn't know who to call upon uh, uh, to, to do his uh, dirty work. Uh, the, the the bosses uh, 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 didn't know who to depend on for help, and uh, that, that's that's why we, we th th there was people uh, injured and because you know, they would drive uh, past houses. Uh, where the sharecroppers lived and tried to shoot in there and sometimes they hit people. Uh, and uh, I was in and out of a lot of those homes. Good, stop. In, in Tyronzo, b before the union was organized, there was a Socialist Party uh, a group that, that uh, H. Mitchell and 
and uh, others of his friends that he had uh, explained socialism to, they, they were active. Uh, but uh, Thomas, when he was down there at a state convention in Tyranza, uh, he, he told them afterwards that, uh, well, you don't need a socialist party here. What you really need is, is a union. And then that's how we got started on a union. Uh, Tell me about the reasons why the study road. Tell me about the reasons why the union had to be interracial. You told me yesterday about the Elaine massacre, which was happened some time before uh, yeah, after in Arkansas. So tell me about why the same reasons you told me yesterday about why it had to be interracial. You can begin any time. Well, I, I made a survey uh, of what was printed about the Elena massacre in the Memphis papers, uh, which, see, it happened right after World War I, uh, 18 or 17 or 18 or 19, I don't know exactly the time now. and I. I had a little time and um, went to one of the libraries in, in uh, Memphis and uh, I was getting papers and uh, the man that was in charge of the research, he got interested in what I was doing and he, he would find, dig, dig up everything he had on uh, the Lane Massacre. And, the thing was uh, that it was all, all only black, it was a black union, uh, none of the whites joined. And furthermore, none of the whites uh, in Arkansas or any other state helped them. And they all, first, uh, a after the massacre, uh, finally there was a, a lawyer from Kansas that, that came down there to have them with some of their cases, uh, and, but uh, and then that's I said, well, told the librarian, well, that, our, our our pictures is not like that. Uh, we we got both races uh, standing together here from the beginning. Uh, that made that made the big difference. Now I need for you to just pick up and tell me. What happened at the Lay Massacre? I mean, they were at a meeting, and tell me what happened, okay? And how these people got killed, and who killed them? Well, it was, it was killed by uh, Ku Klux no, Klan. At the Lane Massacre, they, at the... Uh, they didn't have a chance at all uh, to because uh, they didn't have ammunition if they, if they had a gun. Uh, I mean, it's the Lane uh, uh, sharecroppers that were trying, trying to get better wages and let's see, the sh sharecropper is supposed to, uh, he gets half, of it, supposed to get half of the money on the, Depending on the weight of that uh, cotton they brought in, but uh, they, the gin people would uh, gave all the money to the planters, and the planters were supposed to divide it up too. But uh, most of them didn't. Stop. Good. Right. You may begin. We we knew that uh, we didn't know how far we'd be able to go, but uh, uh, actually, uh, before uh, before we got through with February, we, we knew that we uh, had uh, attracted the attention of the country, and uh, if, if we. One, why we're really going to be uh, d down 
as a, as a real uh, progress. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the writers in, in the New York Times uh, had a series of articles, and uh, this time I'm going to be talking about myself. The guy says, well, there's a, uh, lots of trouble brewing in, uh, in uh, the Delta section of Arkansas, and in the center of, of that is a young uh, Methodist preacher, Ward Rogers, see. and uh, uh, of course we hadn't thought about uh, getting all that publicity, but uh, uh, it continued, and uh, Mitchell was awful good on uh, if something happened, the way he, he could write in a, just a few words that send it off to uh, Washington and, and New York. Uh, we're out. We're out of time. Go over. It takes me over to uh, over the town at uh, where they make uh, sewing machines. Singer sewing machines, uh -huh. and uh, and the other place was was in Crit Never mind. It's end of wild track. Uh, Ward Rogers takes seven up. Kidnapped us, and so if you want to get out of here, why you call a newspaper in in Memphis and tell them that you were kidnapped with Ward Rogers, <laughs> and we'll hit the pages. <laughs> and I, he got so excited, he went in and <laughs> told the sheriff that, and then he came come running out, and he, he did, went on to where the phone was, and, and then the, the sheriff uh, had a grin on his face when he came out. Okay. Uh, that last was a little wild track, and uh, 15, 15 minutes, you can... Ignore it. Okay, it takes seven up. Ward Roger. Well, H. L. Mitchell had a uh, younger brother. Uh, his name was Ed, but uh, we called him a little boy. And he, he'd been to sea several times, but uh, he visited us every time he was could get off the boat, and uh, so. He'd been, one, one day it was, nothing seemed to be happening. So he says, let's, let's stop and get a newspaper and see what we're doing today. <laughs> All of us got a kick out of that. Okay. Loose and Koch, hanging story. Tell me that one. Well, it happened this way. Mitchell had arranged two meetings for me to speak, but it was the same night and the same time. And uh, he didn't realize it till middle of the afternoon. And so he came over and told me about it, and he uh, took me then to uh, uh, the Singer Sewing Machine Company place. and. Uh, and then he, he got in touch with uh, Coke and uh, his brother Reed, uh, Buddy Reed, and they went to Crittenden County, where uh, was one of those two places, spots. And they get over there, and they, uh, Coke was uh, giving them a talk. He, he was president of the uh, MENA. College at Mena, Arkansas, and he'd followed everything we'd done, and uh, he was pretty careful what he would say. But uh, the planners and their writing bosses uh, came in there, and one of them had the rope, and 
he put it around his neck and drug him out. And, and uh, uh, Reed followed right, right on out. And, um, but fortunately, uh, a, a deputy sheriff from Whitman County got there that had, knew me by sight. And, and uh, I've forgotten his name. I didn't know his name then. And he, he says, well, uh, this, is, this is not Ward Rogers. So they, they threw the rope down and all got in their cars and left. <laughs> so that's, that's why uh, Cook and Reed, did, it was kind of like a lariat rope. Uh, uh, but they had a, a real hanging knot. I, I, I couldn't. Uh, it's a great big. Let's stop. Now. Does anyone else have a question that they'd like to ask? Guess this is more wild track. Sorry. And turned me loose. See, that that, that loose. puzzled me, and uh, I, uh, I, I, I know very. You got, you got as much, Mitchell's got as much about it in that yeah. book as... Yeah. yeah, but it's better when somebody like you can tell us. It's much better. Um, so then we want two things, okay? And because we're about to run out of film... Uh, that last was just trying to grab a little wild track. Um, Ward Rogers, take eight up. How did you pass the word that there was going to be a union meeting at whomever's church or wherever it was going to be, okay? And then, hmm? Well, uh, they did it themselves. We, we, we get the You weren't involved in that or at all? You, no, no. Uh, you can't give me anything on that, huh? No. Okay. Can you tell me the, well then, the two things. Can you tell me the Mary Connor Meyer story? What can you tell me about her? Oh, yes, the red-headed lawyer that yeah that, 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 the AAA investigator that uh, she, she had worked for the FBI and had put uh, you put Capone away but we don't want to know that on film you don't want that on the film no yeah no we just want to notice where uh, there was there was any no what didn't notice about the thing uh huh but she she came there and uh, that's where I saw her first time okay she was about what had happened to sharecroppers. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I know, I know. Sorry about this. We're just trying to grab as much uh, wild track comments as possible. All of previous wild track. Rogers, take it up. Well, the, the Roosevelt administration, uh, you, see, you see the Senator Robinson uh, was was the older senator from Arkansas at the time, and he, he was very, very conservative, and uh, they he controlled a lot of votes in the FDR's administration, and um, so and. and he, and he would always vote with uh, anything that came up with with, with the planners, uh, but uh, he he died, and uh, uh, the woman I forget her name right now uh, was elected, and uh, the senator from Louisiana. Uh, came up there and, and uh, campaigned for her. Uh, and uh, she, she would come to our meetings. For instance, she, she was at the, on a fall at hell, called a meeting, and uh, he had invited several, uh, but she, she came and Mr. Rogers, that's good, but I want you to tell me how the SCFU felt about Roosevelt and his New Deal administration. Well, uh, I was on, on one of the trips 
to Washington, and we we weren't uh, weren't, weren't able to, to get to to see the Secretary of Agriculture. We we, we saw uh, uh, one one of his assistants, the one from University of Chicago, uh, but uh, he, he wouldn't take any st stand either. He, what ain't better than Robinson? Uh, okay, that's good. But I need for you to tell me again. We have to do it quickly before we run our film. How you felt about Roosevelt and his administration? Did you feel that he was a friend? He was a foe? He didn't care about you? How did the STF you feel about Roosevelt? Well, uh, Thomas told us he was. A, Got in to see Roosevelt a few times, and he uh, uh, he was talking to him, and Roosevelt says, "Well, uh, uh, I'm a better politician than you are." And Tom Tom says, "Well, naturally, you're on that side of this, and I'm on this." <laughs> uh, Know anything about the uh, Farm Tenancy Commission? Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, well, that uh, uh, not directly, but uh, uh, I wasn't involved with that. But uh, they, they did set up finally, a, a, and uh, uh, the second uh, president we had. Uh, Forget his name now, but uh, he he was appointed to, to represent us as a tenant. Uh, I, I think they had about a dozen people on it, and uh, on a one. First, they had had to, uh, they didn't have any. Okay, that's good. Let me ask you something else real quick. <coughs> did, did the did the sharecroppers and tenant farmers realize that mechanization? and small farms and whatnot, that that was on the way out? Tell me about that. How they feel about mechanization? Well, the, uh, the, the cotton picking machine was, was invented right there in, in Memphis. And, and the guy, two brothers that invented it, uh, uh, contacted uh, Mitchell and uh, he, he invited Mitchell to come up with and see the, the first test of it, and Mitchell took me with him, and uh, they had, had it fixed up only for one row at a time. Uh, they used a unit over uh, one, two, or three now, uh, and, and it. Look, this was a great long cotton row, and it went up the other end and back, uh, and it had 250 pounds of cotton. Well, now, 250 pounds is a good day's work, see, and this was made in about 20 minutes. Uh, so Mitchell and I knew that uh, uh, our sharecropper union was going to be here too long because uh, the, the cotton picking is uh, uh, they, they see the, uh, in the spring they have cotton chopping they thin it out well you, you can thin that uh, with a with a tractor going across uh, and, uh, maybe it wouldn't be quite as good as a man with a hoe, oh, but... Uh, okay, let's stop for a second. Yeah, I've been trying to tell you one... <laughs> about that... Uh, oh. About that uh, guy that claimed to be a... Uh, reporter. Mm-hmm. Well, when he... he See, he was making telephone calls, and 
So I stopped him and I said, uh, did you still get on the phone? He said, yeah. I says, well, if you want to get out of here, why, you, you call a juice paper over in Memphis and tell them that, that you were being held over here with Ward Rogers and they'll put it on the front page and we'll, we'll get out. And so the, they let us out without him having to even call them. <laughs> okay. You know any more jokes? That last was Wild Trek. Ward Rogers, take nine up. Do you remember that? They thought it was going to lighten up their load? Yeah, yeah. But uh, along about that time, I, I, they moved me out here to California. Um. I probably saved my neck. <laughs> Okay, um, let's do this. That'll be it. We only have, have Ward Rogers, take nine up. That last minute. bit was oh. wild. Uh, take nine up. Wait, do you have another joke that's a little bit more universal that anyone from the Depression would know? Is there any music? Is there any song? Well, yeah, we, uh, we had a couple of Two or three people that wrote songs. Uh, yeah. You sing? And uh, when you get down to San Diego, uh, you, you'll sing. Yeah, you Mr. Hancock. Hancock, yeah. Uh, okay, tell me the joke and then. Come on. Which joke? The one you were just telling me. About the guy that wanted to get out. You told him that. Well, uh, we do, went back to the hotel and. and uh, uh, he talked to me for a while, and, uh, and then I went, he was going up to his room, and, and I went back to the, to the newspaper office, and I told him what had happened, and uh, so they, uh, the editor, publisher, uh, he, he called uh, the paper in, in New Orleans, and, and they'd never heard of him, see. <laughs> so, so the whole thing was a set up, see. Uh, and and uh, the, the next day I, I went over to about five o'clock when the police come out of the uh, uh, city hall. I, all of them went home, you know. And uh, I waited there, and sure enough, the guy that drove us over there, he come down the steps too. <laughs> and then I, I knew it was the police. We just ran out. That was good. <laughs> 